Alright guys, now that we understand how to get free stock data, we can begin building some functions. So the very first function I need to build is I need to build a function that can create URLs based on what information we need. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having a huge list of companies, Yahoo, Google, Netflix, so on and so forth. Say this list is 500 companies long. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a function that replaces the company name with all of the companies in my text file. Therefore, it creates separate URLs and then you can go to this URL, it could download Google's information. Go to the next URL, it can download Yahoo's information. Go to the next URL, it can download Netflix. So therefore, we can use this to basically loop through our text file and download all of that stock information without having to do anything. So that's what we're going to be doing, basically replacing this ticker with whatever is in our text file. So let me go ahead and delete this. Actually, you want to go ahead and make sure you copy that because we're going to be using it later. And we can go ahead and start coding this bad boy. So the very first thing I want to do is, you know, put my PHP tags in. And I also want to include the connection for my database. We're not going to be working directly with the database in this tutorial, but I don't want to forget it. So in order to include your database, just go ahead and write the path to your database. When I think my folder was called includes and my connection file was called connect.php. So now we're connected to our database, even though we really don't need it for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and get to the good stuff, creating the function that's going to allow us to download a bunch of mass stock data. So function, and the very first thing we want to do is this function is going to create a bunch of different URLs based on what ticker we pass it in. So it's going to take one parameter, and I'm just going to name this create URL, and the parameter it's going to take is the ticker. Now the ticker is basically the symbol of the company, like I said, and the very first thing I want to do is, oh, I want to mention this. I want to build a program that's going to run through all the stock data daily, once a day. So this uh, little URL right here, it takes two dates. It takes where do you want the stock data to begin and where do you want the stock data to end? Well, we want it to end on the current date. However, we can't put in a certain date like 0, 3, 2012 because even though today is January 3rd, 2012, tomorrow it's not going to be. Tomorrow it's going to be the 4th and then the 5th. So we can't put in numbers like that or else it's always going to use that range. So we want to say, okay, we want whatever the date is, the current date. So how do we build a program that does that? Well, let's go ahead and we need to store the month, the day, and the year, all current, in a separate variable. And PHP comes with built-in date functions that return the current date, month, and year. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let me just go ahead and there we go. Current month. Let's go ahead and work with that first because the very first um, symbol after ticker, and I don't know why they don't do day, month, year, because we're America and we have things set up differently. but the month comes first so that's why I'm coding month instead of a uh, day so just make a variable called current month and set it equal to date with the parameter of n now you're saying okay what the heck is this crap right here the date function in PHP is a built-in function that returns a value now based on whatever letter you pass it in is whatever value it returns whenever you pass in n it's gonna return to you the current month as a number so for example it's gonna return one since this is January in February it's gonna return two so it's gonna return to you a value one through tell twelve excuse me however if you remember from the last tutorial I said that whenever we're working with that string you needed the month minus one so you remember in that string it said zero that is because the first month is January so it's gonna return one for current month but we need it to be zero so just go ahead and set current month equals current month minus one now you can do your little shortcut for your assignment operator but I like to do it longhand because I like to visually see so now in January it's gonna store it as one 
and then we're eventually gonna turn it into zero. If it was if it was December, then the current month would be 12, and then we would su subtract one from it, and then we would have 11. And we need that number to plug into the URL. So now we do the same thing for current current day, and the symbol for day is date. And as a parameter, it's J. How they came up with that, don't ask me. But anyways, what this is going to do is it's going to return to you a number 1 to 31. And since today is January 3rd, it's going to return the value 3, which is what we want. And the last one is the current year. So current year. And just go ahead and let me just copy this crap right there. Now the symbol for year is a capital Y. Now what this is going to do is it's going to return a 4 digit year like 1999 2003 it's going to return a string that's four numerical digits long so now we can use this n j and y to basically grab the current date and why am i again one more time why am i just not using 1 3 2012 because tomorrow this is going to be 1 4 2012 and instead of having to jump back in here and rewrite re write our script every time it does it automatically it grabs the date from the server so now what we need to do is we need to return a string and what this string is it's going to be the string in other words the URL that we can use to download that information so just go ahead and hit return and put two little make sure they're double quotation marks because we're going to be throwing variables in here and we want to interpret those variables before now wow I messed that up oh that's gonna annoy me oh man so hold on one second I gotta go grab that big URL alright guys I got the URL that right there so now I went ahead and I pasted that in so now we can go ahead and start replacing all of this stuff so the first thing we need to do is instead of the company name we're gonna go ahead and just pass it in our ticker signal so instead of Google Let's just go ahead and pass it in our tickle ticker. They say tickle, nothing tickles. So now it's either going to pass it in this or this or this, and that gets passed in directly whenever we're calling our function. So after that, remember d equals current month, and this is zero right now, but we want to set this equal to the variable current month. So d equals current month, and e, remember, equals the date. Today is January 3rd. But we want to change it to the current day, right like that. So instead of three, we write our own day. And let's go ahead and grab this current year. So look for 2012, and it's right after F. So you see, instead of having set dates, what we want to do is we want to give it variable dates. Now these are all going to change. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be passing it in a ticker or a company. It's going to download the that company's information from, let's see what the thing is. Let's go ahead and just do 2011. So it's going to be August 19th, 2011 until today. And that way we can run this script or function every single day in it downloads all the most recent information and we don't have to mess with it or anything so there you go there is your final function and another thing I'm gonna be doing a lot of coding and I don't expect you guys to you know follow this without making any mistakes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post all of this on my forum then oh, what's called tnbforum.com under the PHP section so if you wanna grab it and test your code against mine maybe you know just alter my code then there you go. I'm going to give it to you guys all for free. Don't worry about it. Go get it. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you guys. Well, I'm not even going to tell you guys. It's going to be a surprise. So thanks, guys. Yeah, I'll see you next time.